It's like a pizza crunch without the butter It's like a bird crunch without the water You'll never get the nickels I found What the fuck is that? Oh, well, Keenan and Kayla, a fucking while it's been, nice to see you again, hope you're just as happy to see me as I'm at the see yous, as yous can see me, I can't see fuck all apart from a fucking camera staring at me, and a camera that could do with an upgrade, do you know, agree, this really needs a wee tune up, premeditated part, but before I get into all that man, I should really say, where the fuck have I been? Been nowhere, been in my fucking house. But it's been an interesting couple of weeks, let me take you back. I don't know if I thought he's obviously a turn 30. That's me, I'm a fucking. Am I middle aged? Middle aged, no 50. Fuck knows what I'm a bit of aged. Like a fine wine, I would say though. But I'll take you back, I'll go back a month. <clears throat> I turned 30. I went to Malaga for it. Which was good, went for a couple of days, it was good to get away and uh, forget. <laughs> but it was a good wee holiday, man, first time I've been abroad in like a hot country in a good few years. Only done the three days, I'm one of the cunts, I can't go see weeks and fucking two weeks and all that shit. It was a last minute thing, I literally booked it like two weeks before we went. So it was like a heavy, just went, found flights, got accommodation and booked it, packed it, fucked off. But it was good to see you at that fucking booking holiday six months doing like your weight and your pain and I thought, I fucking forget, I can't be arsed with all that, I want to just book it and go. You know what I mean? I'm one of them dead spurring the more. Even two weeks was a bit of a stretch. Never mind two months for fucking six months or whatever else these cunts do, but anyway, I went and had a belt at a time. It's the only thing I see about when we were in Malaga or Spain, it's just See the cunts you meet, you're like that. They just see you as a walking, talking, bank-haired man. It's just for our cunts just try to get their horns in your pockets and they're pure nuggets. They're bams. They think you're a fucking idiot because you don't talk fucking Spanish, whatever the fuck language half of them are talking. Fucking nuggets, know what I mean? If somebody comes out here, it's a bit... You get treated with a bit more respect, you just get treated like a fucking idiot. I have clowns with, and drug dealers out there. They've never got drugs on them, you don't know, notice that? But see if you're out here and you want drugs, and somebody says, I'll get you drugs, they've, nine times out of ten, they've got them if they're the drug dealer. But nah, they're there, the drug dealers just never have drugs on them. Mickey Mouse, man. And their stuff's always shite. And notice they love bumping you, but they hate getting bumped. Oh, don't get me that. I could go on a big rant about us. Fucking hypocrites. But anyway, fuck them. Went to Spain and obviously, I was trying to find a weed shop, man, that was a fucking thing. Because I was under the I'll go to Spain, weed's decriminalised. Went out there and, honest to God, you would have think fucking asking about weed was enough to get you to jail the way cunts were acting. I don't know. We don't know. What? I mean, they're a lot of fucking police. Do you think the Spanish police have recruited a fucking... Scottish fucking loudmouth fucking fat steamer to sit and try and go undercover and fucking entrap you. You kid me on. They're stupid. They're no smart. That's why they're jumping about selling shite drugs or trying to. Because they're no clever. All the clever cunts are only on the strip. They're probably the ones that are lying. You fucking sell that for me, you fucking wee gimp. You know what I mean? But anyway, ended up smoking hash, which was alright at the time. And uh, the last night we ended up going to, uh, I'm not sure where the tune was, it wasn't Ben and Medin, but it was kind of near there. So we went down there, fucking, oh what a fucking, oh, what in the try to find this weed shop, Brain Luckers it was called. Couldn't find it, then found it, and it was shut for a siesta. So we ended up just sitting on the beach drinking cocktails, which isn't the worst thing to be doing whilst you're waiting. But I went back and got it, and it was just a mad experience getting into a fucking cap and getting a bit of weed, it was. But uh, that was the last night, ended up a bit of a mad one, ended up in the Charlie. So I, uh, the next day I was kind of happy to game. That's what I'm like whenever I fucking took gear, I just want to go away, sit myself. But uh, 
was it the following week? It was like two weeks later, obviously, I came back and uh, 12.50 TV, Sound of the Schemes, was hosting its event, first of its kind. Obviously, if anybody doesn't know what it is, it's basically 12.50 TV. It's one of the biggest Scottish platforms for uh, rap music in Scotland. So they were uh, putting on an event and uh, they'd asked me to kind of host it. And I was like, aye, as long as I go to play tunes. So I go to do a couple of tunes of myself. And it was a great night, man. It was, uh, it was a lot of great talent there, man. Shout out, everybody smashed it. Anybody, anybody that went, fucking thank you for coming. Especially if you came to see me. <laughs> but, eh, uh, uh, it was a good night, man. But I fucking end up mad with it. Fucking scalped a half bottle. Fucking sinking beers. Because you get you'd a crate. We were in this place called The Caves in Edinburgh. Don't know if Andy's ever been there, but the clues in the title, it's a cave. It's like a, the backstage bit, right? It's like a fetish dungeon. Or fucking own any other night. So basically cunts would get like bent air, the fucking, it was like a tomb, it looked as if like, you would sacrifice a fucking goat in it or something. Uh, cunts would like pay to get bent air and spank and cunts would sit in the galleries and fucking watch it. CD, CD as fuck. But tonight, there was no spanking going on. Well, we were spanking beers and half bottles, but eh, uh, I so we ended up, we get supply. First gig I've been to the supply, a big fucking big bucket with the ice and the coronas. Ah, oh, fucking, we're doing it, we've made it, boys. So obviously, I love a bit of generosity. I appreciate it. So I fucking tanned all sorts. End up fucking squished, then some kind of end up whipping at the gear, didn't they? So I end up fucking on the gear. On stage, John, like oh, or yeah, Eric Camp, man. And uh, fucking, long story short, I end up fucking getting him with a mad random bird. And fucking, whatever happened, happened. Woke up the next day, because I'd been seeing her, Lassie. And I woke up the next day, fucking riddled with shame, man. It's like, what the fuck have I done? It's like something I'd have never have done. That's the first time I've ever done anything like that. So I told her right away. And uh, that kind of fractured things a bit, man. And I was just like, ah, what? I'm a fucking idiot. And I was like, ah, no, what? Fuck this. So I decided to get myself into recovery. So for the past week, I've actually been going to NA, Narcotics Anonymous. Been half it, man. And see, bonds, I've been loving it, man. It's It was a cunt thing what happened. It's probably the best, worst thing I've ever done. Because I've managed to take this positive, I'm not saying I'm glad I've done it, I fucking wish i never done it, but, I was looking at it, it's the first I've ever done it, and I always say to myself, why the cunts do that shit, and I was just like, ah, fuck, if I've done that, because when you're mad with four gear, you just don't give a fuck, it's when, you need to deal with it, when it wears off, and I'm sick of having to deal with shit, when it wears off, because it's always shit, I would have never have done, never, and it kind of scared me a bit, because I says to myself, right, I knew in my heart of hearts I would never have done that, right? Sober. But I thought to myself I'd have control to a degree I'd never have done it in that state. So I went and done it and then I'm like, ah, right, if I've done that, what else am I capable of? And to be quite honest, I don't want to find out. So that's when I went, fuck all this. Because I woke up after the sound of the schemes, should have been buzzing, after the night I had, I was fucking pretty much suicidal, fucking depressed, hated it, wish I never went, all the negative, and I'm like, ah, fuck this, this isn't worth it, I mean, where is the good in this, because it's no there, and this isn't an isolated instant, like, after Bams to the Slaughter, felt the exact same, after Bams to the Slaughter, I didn't get to sleep, till 5pm the following day, I stopped drinking about early morning, and I just, I was wide awake, pinned, and I just had to stay up, and it was fucking horrible, man, she stoking about, like, had to go and get myself a bit of green to try and bring myself down, she walking about the next day when it's on, it's a gear, oh, it's fucking, you're just looking at cunts like, ah, I wish I was you, man, jealous of cunts that stayed off it, it's a fucking soul destroying experience, and I'm like, ah, fuck this. It's, I should, it's ruining my sense of achievement, and it sets me back. Like, the, see, the week after, I don't do nothing. I don't fucking post. I hide away in my fucking house, 
what a wee shite bag. Depressed, eating shite, cutting shut, no, I know day nothing, crab at bastard, fucking, for what? What, I know the best thing about it? I need to pay for this. Usually when you pay for shit, you pay for shit to make you feel better. Know what I mean? Why are you paying for something that makes you feel terrible? It's beggar's belief. What? It doesn't even make sense. It's ludicrous. So I, I was like, ah, fuck this shit. And see, every time before, that's no, this isn't the first time I've went to NA or CA, Cocaine Anonymous. I started, oh, I didn't start going. The first time I ever went was like two years ago. Before COVID and all that shit. I fucking end up in a heavy weekend, a heavy Sunday bender, man, and I fucking woke up on the Monday. I was meant to be going to work and I just stayed in bed. And I was planning, I was like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. I just felt that bad, felt terrible. And I'd thought about it in my head, planned it in my head, but I would just end up dragging myself out of bed and go to work. And at work, I was just like, actually, usually I just go to work and ride it out. But it was weird, see, when I was getting home, I was on the bus home for work, this was the Monday, right, so I'd slept a bit, but I was still quite fucked. I was on the bus, and obviously the bus is full of people, and I just suddenly got fucking heavy anxiety, went to a point I was like, ah, fuck, I need to get off this bus. I had to get up, and the bus had stopped at the lights, and the, the bus stop was like in front of the lights, so I had to wait in the bus at the lights, and I was like, ah, I need off this bus now. I just, I felt weird in my own body. My, I didn't feel right in my own body. It was fucking, and I walked home and I was like, ah, what the fuck, man? I, I'd never felt as a fall in my life. And I went home, and I'm at, I ended up getting a bit of green. I was like, ah, the green will fucking maybe help it a bit. Bad mistake. The green just made it ten times worse. So I ended up having to get a Valium. I've not touched Valium in years. And this is how bad I was. I took it, and it did kind of hang me a bit, but the next day, I was just a pure crab. It couldn't have, I was fucking a mess the next day, and that. It took a few days for that kind of feeling to go away. And that's when I was like, this has to stop. This is freaking me out. This is getting mental now. Because it was a few days, I felt no right in my own body. And it was a kind of, I was like, have I finally fucking popped it? Is this the point where I've fucking done the damage? Thankfully, it went away. And I was like, alright, I need to go to CA and stop this from happening. And I went to CA and I just, I don't know, I just... See, going to something like half the back of your cum down, you're already feeling that kind of fucking full anxiety, depressed way, you know that, man. You're getting into a pure new environment. End it's ever been at a fort, it's weird. See, when you're getting into a room full of strangers, like, say it's like a pub or something like that, you walk in and... Most everybody's looking around to see who's that's walked in. You've got eyes on you. Oh, I mean, people are, who's this? Are they kind of ones that's kind of, no uncomfortable, but it's one of the ones, right, you've just walked in. Well, like CA and NA, and that's totally different. You walk in, and it's the same kind of scenario, but every country's just pure welcoming. Like, how you doing? No, like, see, when they see you're a new face, they're that extra welcome because they know you, it's your first time here. So they make a pure point of shit, you don't get to know your name and all that. So very supportive, man. Which is a bit of a shock to the system when you're no used to that. Because where else do you go into a room where you get treated with that level of respect? No very many places half strangers. So I, that is quite a fucking shock to the system. But obviously, once the come down went away, I went away, oh fuck it, I can handle it myself. I stayed out the gear for a few weeks, but I was still drinking, smoking green and all that shit. And uh, before you know it, you end up back in the gear then, it's fucking same shit. So that kind of, I went back and forward, I would stay off it, then I would end up back on it, and then I'd go a bit, then I'd get a cunty, I'd come down the block, and nah, fuck, this is to stop. Waking up, same scenario, skint, depressed, why'd I do that? Ripped the arse out it, fucking life's in fucking turmoil. And it was just that, back and forth, as soon as I come down and went away, I was like, I can handle this. Because I was only responsible for myself. So I could go, oh, fuck it, man, it's just I come down, I can deal with it. But this time it was different. I actually kind of like fucking 
hurt somebody I did genuinely care about. And I'm like, ah, this is bigger than me now. Like, I, I, when I was in the grip, say, like, an addiction, like, fucking when I was bad with it, like, a few years ago, I hurt a good few people. But I always told myself, oh, I've changed since then. Even though I, if I still occasionally take gear, I'm not the same guy that done all that shit. You know what I mean? You tell yourself that. But now I've realised I'm like that. I'm still doing the same shit. What the fuck's changed? Nothing. I've maybe swapped the addiction, swapped the drug, no swapped the addiction, swapped the drug. Things, but I'm still finding myself back in the gear. Skint, own cunts money, depressed, suicidal, all the same shit. And it's never good. Even at the time, the thought of doing it is better than actually doing it. At the time, it's it's just it's fucking awful, man. And see, the thing is, in Scotland, obviously that Vice documentary came out saying Scotland is the cocaine capital. I could have fucking tell you that about two years ago. It's not a fucking surprise nor a secret. How how many people do you know that sells gear? How many people do you know that's take gear? In fact, he's in. How many people do you know that's never took gear? Or has took it, but doesn't take it. What percentage do you think they fit in? It's a fucking minimal percentage. See in other countries in the world, it's no like that where you go into a pub and the first thing a cunt offers you a party before they offer you a pint. That's no a normal thing in other countries. But here it's just the norm. It's like you can't go anywhere without it being. You walk into a toilet, can people run your horn along that fucking toilet seat and you'll find a bit of gear in your horn? easy and it's like a thing that was the pandemic before this covid shit and i'm not saying covid was a lot of shit a lot of it was a, i'm not saying covid the virus is shit that exists it can harm you depending on the person but all the shit that went with it why not treat that with the cocaine for the same contempt because that's killing people depressing people what, 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 is it going to take for a politician's win they become a fucking addict and kill themselves before some cunt does something. And I'm not saying this is I've tried to put the blame in. The day I've took a drug and I'm responsible for myself. But the thing is, you can't just go to this, well, you've took it, it's on you. That's no working. Because you know what I mean? What, what, see, there was support for people. Education. She's just gone like this, don't take drugs. Take, you get to jail, take drugs, oh, you're in fault. That's no working. It never has worked and it never will. See, 10, 20 years ago, you only had to know a certain few people, only certain cunts sell drugs or sold drugs. Now every second person fucking sells them. We guys, old guys, fucking guys in the middle. But I've done it myself. How many people see where we come from, where I come from, especially I stay in Govan, I stay in Govan now, came for Cardone all my life. See the cunts that you see doing well? They're the fucking drug dealers. That's what it is. It's like you, you hardly see somebody that's doing well for themselves that isn't fucking punting. You don't see cunts doing well in any other kind of aspects. It's all kind of comes back to. And the thing with money, man, it's so easy for somebody just to start selling drugs. It's like, and it's attractive. It's quick money. There's a big fucking customer base. The only thing you need to do is no take it yourself, which is fucking easier said than done. You know what I mean? There's no opportunity for naked cunt. Wages are shite. Especially now. Cost of living, you're getting... Everything's going up apart from the wages you're getting. Like fucking Asda Morrison's. All the prices of the food and that's went up. But they've no declared it. You just walk in. I know it's still like a fucking protein bar. And I'll do a pound. A pound 25 now. It adds up when you get up your messages. Where the fuck's that extra money come from? I mean, people working two jobs and that. Some People shouldn't need to work two jobs. Two jobs are for two people. Fuck's sake, know what I mean? But I, it's country's fucked, man. So I, I've decided to try and unfuck myself. So I've got into NA and I've been now that I've realised that I've got like an exterior fucking motivation. I've like I, I've fucking fucked something that I never. I've hurt somebody that I never wanted to hurt. That's giving me the kind of kick up the ass. It's a shame it's took for this, for that, for me to finally realise that. But I'm here now. I can only do what I can do the now. I can only act on the present. But see, since doing it, I've been doing it since, I'd say, what day is it? 
right now, today is Thursday. So I've been clean 11 days. And see, I've done like a month off of fucking everything before. But I used to think an addict, right? Because you'd go into these meetings and guys blah, I've fucking inject, I've smoked fucking this and that every day. They can't go a day for it. I'm like, I'm not like them. You know what I mean? I never, I didn't take drugs every day. I'm not an addict. But the difference between an addict is, it's no taking drugs every day. I was thinking about taking drugs every day. I just never done it. Oh, see, when I came off the green, it felt like I'd fucking broke up for a relationship. Well, when I talk about, I get the J, I get four and a half years when I was 17, and the last year that kind of fucking stirred things up, whatever, man, she ended up writing as a letter, splitting up, when the jail was splitting up, it was a fucking sham anyway, but still, I was more gutted about coming off the green than I was about getting that letter off her. That's when I was like, ah, wait a fucking minute. <laughs> I'm more gutted about breaking up with Mary Jane, you know what I mean? But that's that's when I realised, I was like, ah, fuck. But it became so part, like, I'm, th I'm thinking back in the past, since 2016-17, I've not went a very what, extended period of time, apart from that time I was in the jail last year, whole month, that's the longest I've went without taking drugs since the last time I was in the jail, which was 11 month, and before that it was a few years and all. Fucking hell, it took jail for me to get a fucking break. And obviously, when you're in the jail, you're, you've, it's against your will, so it's not as if you're like out of. You're thinking, oh, I can't wait to go out and get a fucking. Because the nah, no, that time ever, the time I was in before doing a 11 month recall, within about an hour or two of me getting out, I was sniffing gear. So, you know what I mean? It was always fucking there. It's so easy to get. But now it's different, man. Since I've been going to the meetings, I've realised it's like I would turn up, I used to go to the meetings and I'd just sit at the back and just clock watch, I've went to a meeting, it's not working for me, now I've started engaging in the meetings, because the guy, in a meeting, they give you a chance to talk, so basically the start of a meeting, they'll get, the guy, you will have like an addict, that's like kind of, went clean, he said, we'll get people who's done eight months clean, there's a guy, earlier on, 25 year clean, fucking amazing, he'll share his story, talk about where he came from, his addictions and that, and how he started with the meetings and that, then they'll open up the meeting, and everybody can talk, so at first I would just sit quiet, no day anything. But uh, no, since I've just started engaging, so I'm listening to the story. Because see, when you listen to the story, it's not about the drugs that cunts take, because cunts have got all different types of addictions to different drugs, but it's not the drug that's the problem, it's the feeling. So you're taking a drug to fucking block out some sort of feeling or something like that in your life, some kind of past trauma. So when you're listening to people, you... You start to realise it's not the drug, it's the issue. Like, a lot, every country's there for the same reason. We'll try to fucking block something out. And uh, and when you listen to some stories, you know what I mean? See when you look past what drug they took, you see a lot of similarities with yourself. Me personally, I fucking all the time. And that's what you start looking at. You start listening to what people are saying. You go, fuck, I can sympathise with that. That was me. And you realise, well, if he's here and I'm here, then I can get there. And... Uh, I and when they open up the meeting, you can sit and talk and see everything that gets said in the meeting stays there. Obviously, I'm talking just about the structure of the meeting. I'm not telling you any personal stories about any particular individual. I'm just telling you how it's set up. I'm well within my right to fucking tell you that. But uh, they open up the meeting and basically you can say, right, well, obviously you'll just say whatever the fuck you want. So why people go and they just vent. Say what you've been doing that day, shit that's on your mind. Because see, it's like therapy. It's like counselling, but you're not sitting talking to some guy that's fucking done four years at uni, came for a fucking good upbringing and all that shit, has never experienced that you're talking about in a room full of your peers that have been there, done that, know what I mean? It's therapeutic, it's great, man. See, it becomes a drug in itself, go to the meetings. Because you leave it and you just feel pure energised with energy. It's like the camaraderie, the fucking support, man. You're like, that ah, fucking yes. So, uh, I'd only been going to the meetings about a week. Saturday there. Fucking, I was at a meeting in Postal Park, beautiful day, cycled up, I was actually in George Square, I was meeting a guy about a gig or something, and uh, I was seeing a few boys, obviously recognising from my videos, get great taste, shout out to the boys, and uh, they were like, oh, I've got to transmit tan and half bottles, and I'm like, ah, fuck, I could never go to that, I know, man, that's too much temptation for me. So I went to the meeting, 
And I feel proud of myself because now I've, I've got, I kick up my arse, I'm like, ah, no, every, I plan my day around a meeting. I still do what I'm doing, obviously I'm doing a podcast and now I fucking do my music. But I make sure I get a meeting in a day. I try, some days, like there's been, in the past two weeks I've missed two days, purely because I was fucking, I did not have the time to get to a meeting. But there was so much shit and it just shit overlapped. I would have tried to get a meeting, but fuck it. I didn't let it fucking knock me off my steam. But I went to the meeting in Postal and uh, I, brilliant meeting in that. Then I was on my way back. I was cycling through the town and I was like, ah, fuck it. Cunt's got a trans. I'll cycle by trans, but just get a wee look, man, see what cunts are up to. I cycled around and uh, I've seen the queue. It was fucking massive. One of the got for the front gate at the high court and it went round. See if you're through the high court and you're facing like Glasgow Green, see that street to the left. It was a way up that street and then snake round. Oh, it was fucking, it was massive. So I was like, ah, right, man, I'm going to fucking chance getting in here, man. This is fucking, there's no way they're going to be checking every cunt's tickets. So I ended up getting a hold of a, like a QR code. This, this was the Saturday. So I went and got a hold of somebody's QR code for the Friday. And, uh, I just scribbled out the Friday on it. And I was like, I'm just going to chance it. I'm going to get myself a big fucking rainbow colour part. It was a belter. So, uh, I queued up myself and I got right to the gate and I just went, right, obviously you've got like so many stewards you can go to. I was like, right, I ain't them up, right, there's a young cunt. I'll pick the young guy because he'll be like, oh, you know yourself, the younger cunt's more likely to probably let me in. And there's a chance he might have recognised me, so I was like, ah, fuck it. Went up to him, and he's like, ah, scanned it. He's like, ah, it's no scanning, mate, no. And I was like, ah, mate, you're joking. I was like, I've no signal. He's like, ah, I've had a few problems. It was a screenshot. Obviously, I was playing the fucking, I was getting the acting fucking cared out, you know what I mean? And he's like, listen, you'll need to just take it to the box office, mate, and they'll give you a ticket if you scan it. And I was like, ah, come on, mate, I've just waited in that queue, you know what I mean? Can you just let us in? I'm right here, and he's like, I can't do it. Fair does. Walked back out and I just walked the line. Because it was that many cunts, he didn't even fucking, he was too busy with other cunts. And I eyed up the next person and I seen a mad woman. And she looked a bit clueless, like she looked a bit confused. The steward, and I was like, alright, ah, she's fucking deaf, I was going to let us in. Went up to her, same thing and all, oh no, kind of like you, and I was like, for fuck, right. So I walked back out and I was kind of deflated and I was like, ah, right. I just seen this other one, I was like, ah, fuck it, I'm just chancing this cunt. Didn't think any no of it before I get knocked back in. Walked up and the cunt was like that. So that way you could tell he just scanned one ticket too many. He just went like that. On you go. And just, I was like that. It's kind of, all right, cheers. See, that way I was ready to get knocked back. So I kind of hesitated. Then I was like, fuck, I better walk. And I was like, I saw him and just walked in. I was like, yes. See, what a buzz it was, man. Went in and pure scorching day, man. But see all of the reservations I had? Because I had this nervous energy. And usually seem you've got this Nervous energy, I miss it. I used to think it was like, oh fuck, I can't wait to get a drink and that. But this was just like energy, it was excitement. I misidentified it for so years. Like when I go to it in the past, I would fucking supplement it with bevy or whatever else. But this was just energy and it was just excitement. So once I get in, it was like, ah, oh, yeah, it was like putting on a fucking bet and winning. You know what I mean? That, that kind of, I don't gamble, but I, I would liken this to probably how a gambler might feel. But I get in, man, I was buzzing, Fontaine's DC was on, man, I was like, ah, yes. And, uh, see, for all the reservations I had about the drink and that, for as far as I concer was concerned, there could have been no bar in there. There was no temptation or nothing. Nothing. So I end up, I was just jumping into the, I went down to the front of the crowd, right into it, snuts came on, mosh pitched a lot, time my life, man, I was jumping about like I was at my nut, it was f amazing. Foles, they were fucking brilliant and all. The, the crowd at Foles was more mental than the crowd that's nuts, which I thought was fantastic, but that's another thing. See, when you're in mosh pits, I'm used to being in mosh pits, mad with for like Yerekis, whatever else. See, when you're in them like that, it's, a, it's some buzz and that, and it is some buzz, sober. But when you're sober, you're so aware of how fucking dodgy it is. Like, I'm alright, I'm a big boy, I'm six foot three, and I'm fucking way about 16 stone, I'm... I can handle myself in a situation like that. But there was wee guys about up to my fucking chest, like they looked about 13 or something, in mosh pits. I'm like, you're gonna get killed. 
And that was the thing about Transmit, it was weird. I went to Transmit like one of the first years, I think it was when Biffy Clyro was playing. And fucking... I don't remember there being that many Waynes at it. Like, when I say Waynes, I don't mean like 16, 17, I mean like fucking children, 12 to 13 year olds. About 90% of it. And most of them were smoking elf bars. What the fuck is the deal with these elf bars, by the way? I've got pals that don't even smoke that are on elf bars. What in the fuck, man? Cunts are fucking fucked with all Gear, elf bars, fuck. Thank fuck I'm in recovery, man. I got out just in time. But, eh... Uh, I, man, fucking... I was kicking about myself, loving it. I ended up meeting up with my pal. He got in, and I met up with him at the end, but I was kind of like that, mate. You want to boost? Because he wasn't giving a fuck. He's like, ah, he'd been out for like two days. He's sniffing gear and that, and there's not usually... Seems some kind of whips out a bag of gear. I don't know about yourself, but... My heart used to, like, skip a beat. I bought oh, he's got gear. No, I'd be like, fuck. It was nothing. Yeah, I, it was just Lanny, man. I didn't even acknowledge it. Went home, man. Go to myself a big pizza, kebab, chips, and all that. I didn't buy a munch in there, because another thing, transmit. Fair dudes, see the vans, r- dirty robbing bastards. I understand you should get charged a fortune. Jeff Ellis is a dirty English robbing bastard. You should hang your head in shame, you fucking rat bag cunt. Cunt's paying his fucking lecky bills after the back of these burger vans, man. But uh, for what a bump, it's like fair dues. The prices they charge, but the price compared to the portion size is scandalous. Pizza's the size of like, a dinner plate, 12 quid. I went up to a van. And they were doing milkshakes, 5.50, like fair dues, going price for a milkshake. It was in a coffee cup! I fu- I'm money, I don't give a fuck, I'm no polite. When I think I'm getting bumped, see if I stand in a queue. I don't think because I've stood in this queue, I'm just going to pay for it to be polite. I'll tell you, you know, I don't want it and fucking go somewhere else. Fiver for an ice cream and that. I, I, I go to ice cream, don't get me wrong, I bought a bit of ice cream. I, thought, I think I deserved ice cream for what I'd just done. So I go up myself, wee cone in there, but uh, when I get here, I just saved myself for a month, so I go a big nine quid out of Tinduri Nights in the Govern Road. Fucking ten inch pizza with one topping, dollar kebab, and a portion of chips, nine quid. My name's Grand that. See, when I came in the house, I honestly was just buzzing. I felt like I was on a drug. I was genuinely questioning myself, like, have I been spiked? Like, did I take something and I just don't remember? But I didn't. I was just high in life. And that's how you're meant to feel. And that's when I realised that like, I don't need drink or fucking drugs or whatever to have a good time. I can date all the shit I would date. I used to think, oh, I'd need to put my nut to go in a mosh pit. They're fuck. I didn't date sober. And I don't need to pay for it. What? Like, fucking financially and physically. Like, I woke up the next day and ran a 15k. Fuck's sake, know what I mean? Fuck, if, if I had a come down, I'd have fucking woke up and ate 15 cakes. Bye. Went to transmit again the next day. Just stayed off it. Bought some mere food, but I ended up doing 40 quid and just fucking munching. But fuck it, that's sound. But I woke up on the Monday. I was seeing stats on Wednesday there. Cunts asked me just recovered now. And I'm like, ah, fuck. I've been fucking right back to it, man. See, that was the thing. I always used to knock me off my steam getting on it because it would, see getting on it for me, it was like having a Jenga block. And once you get on it, that Jenga block, and that's the Jenga block is my fucking, everything I'm doing, my podcast, my music, all my structure. That's my structure, the Jenga block. And when I get on it, it just crumbles. And I just need to rebuild it every time. I didn't need to rebuild it this time. And that was fucking beautiful, man. And that's me just de- done a week. And I'm no sitting kidding myself on, by the way. I'm no sitting saying, that's me cured, see you later. I've got a fucking long way to go. But if that's just a taster of things to come, then fucking send it, man. Definitely, man. But honestly, God, I just feel so good. I feel so much more control in my life. I feel so sure in my future. Because I would always see gigs, you know what? I love going to a gig. I, f- I fell in love with my indie music again. I'd fell away for it about having been to a gig in AGC, going to a gig. So I always tell myself, I couldn't go to that. 
I should end up drinking foggy up and I tear it and I'd regret it and wish I never went. I was like, ah, nah, can I go? No. Fucking go to wherever the fuck I want. Have a great night and no wake up scunnered with life. I woke up on Monday with money in my pocket. Might seem like nothing to you, but see to me, that's fucking everything. Oh, every time I'd wake up, no money on me, money spent, and all money out, fucked, and I was always like, never again. I'm saying I'm not going to transmit again. Hate myself, I got into it. I'm buzzing, I went. And that's just because I never touched a fucking thing. So I'm buzzing just talking about it. Yeah, up, man. So, I this is me returning. I'm sorry about the podcast. I've been unemployed lately. So, uh, I've been paying a fucking very talented gentleman. He's been editing my podcast for me. Because I've not had much money coming in. It's been a bit difficult to kind of finance that. Because I've not got sponsors. I really need to finger out and try and chase sponsors. See, I'm kind of, sometimes I feel as if I spread myself too thin. Because I'm trying to do this, keep this podcast running. I'm doing my music and I told myself I'd focus on my music. I have been doing my music, focusing on that. Because that was my one love. That was how all this shit began, was after the of music. And as much as I loved doing the podcast, loved doing my comedy sketches, music is the one thing. If I had to choose one, it'd be music 10 times out of 10. Because there's nothing like music making it for me. That I, I don't get that feeling anywhere else. Just uh, like creating something that's yours. It's a magical thing. If you ever have that creative bug in you, man, fucking exercise it to the best you can. If you feel, if you can make music, you ought to the fucking universe to create it. Don't just take my word for it, do it, man. Uh, it'll be the best thing. You'll never look back. Look, this, every now and then just started off the back of me posting a video playing on the guitar, so. You know what I mean? Now I'm back, I'm acting, I've got my podcast, I've got my music. The more I'm performing at doing the Rabbit Hole Festival, right, so. This will be going up on Friday. I'll be performing the night. So obviously I recorded this Thursday, but this will be Friday when this goes out. So I'll be performing the night at Doon the Rabbit Hole. And it's my first festival, man, and I'm fucking buzzing for it. Ever since I went to Teen the Park, fucking 2014, I was like, I'd love to play a festival, man. It's just it's something about that energy, that vibe. So I've got an opportunity. It's a wee 20-minute set, man, but... Right as soon as I finish this podcast, I'm going to fucking go to like Carlton Studios. Got to rehearse my set. Then I've got a wee music production course after that. I'm busy, I'm a busy guy, man. I've not even got the fucking time for a job, you know what? Fuck's sake, where would I fit a job in? So, I need to find a way of making money. Who the fuck's that? Just like, my buzzer's gone. Where to God, man? I think Crunch just like ringing my fucking buzzer, you know what? I don't know why they think I'm the guy that's going to let them in. Why the fuck would I let you in my clothes? Saying that, man, fuck's sake. If you fucking can't broke into this clothes, you could probably add to it, man. But anyway, before I was rudely interrupted, be fucking buzz shite here. Uh, down the rabbit hole, if you're in Stirlingshire, the off chance that you're fucking running about nearby, make sure you pop in. That'll be an experience. But I. The podcast, I'm going to get back to releasing them regularly again. I'm sorry for the hold up and that, man, but I've just been dealing with some shit. And it's no excuse. I've just been, because with the recovery, I took a week, my first week when I was going to the meetings, I just, just done nothing. I just made sure I went to a meeting every day. So that's me just gradually breaking everything back in. Because I like doing the podcast. I realise we doing the podcast how much I actually love talking to people. See, just me talking, you know. It's brilliant, man. It's therapeutic for me. People can relate, man. It's fucking... It's good for the two years. Or however many people's watching. But I, I'm going to get my shit ready. Then I'm going to hit the studio. But keep an eye on this channel. There's plenty more to come very, very soon. Like, subscribe. And don't get wide. Ha <laughs> ha! Care cheese. <laughs>